Okay. And it's recording. Okay. Um, so tonight, I'd like to welcome everybody to tonight's USA Volleyball Free webinar with one of our official uh, partners in the sport, um, Volleyball Recruits. And we've got both Amanda Millard and, and Chris Mead on tonight. The director and Chris, of course, co-founded the program. Um, they are really strong in lacrosse, and I'm going to let Amanda sort of introduce Chris, and probably pretty close to this, I'll be pitching the screen over to you, Amanda. So um, why don't you introduce yourselves? Great. Well, hi, everybody. Thanks for joining the call. My name is Amanda Millard, director of VolleyballRecruits.net, and Chris Mead is co-founder of VolleyballRecruits.net. Um, we are really excited to be, you know, able to kind of share with you guys what we know about the recruiting process. And uh, Chris is going to tell you a little bit about kind of how we, we joined with uh, USA Volleyball and kind of the relationship that we have with those guys. And just to let you know a little bit of quick background on me, um, I played Division One Volleyball and um, have been through the recruiting process myself. And so it's really kind of exciting to be able to share my knowledge with you guys, kind of both, you know, from the experience as a player and now knowing a little bit about it from the other end as well. So go ahead, Chris, why don't you kind of chat with them about how we got started with this whole gig. Sounds good. Um, yeah, thank you everyone for being with us tonight. Um, my name is Chris Mead. I'm co-founder of VolleyballRecruits.net as well as co-founder of LacrosseRecruits.com. Uh, about three years ago, lacrossrecruits.com got off the ground um, after many years of coaching high school and college lacrosse. Um, we were on the ground um, helping players throughout the country um, get exposure to um, collegiate programs that we're interested in. And we're really on the foreground of using um, Web 2.0 technology to assist in the process and make it more efficient for both players and coaches. Uh, so as we quickly grew and gained market share in the lacrosse market, we were approached by USA Volleyball a little over a year ago to see if we would be interested in providing a niche solution for the volleyball recruiting scene and we were approached by USA Volleyball President David Schreff um, after the group had done some um, research and investigations to the tools that are out there and after a um, long process of really researching the volleyball market and working with coaches from the D1 all the way down to the Division 3 and junior college level we produced VolleyballRecruits.net, uh, got the stamp of approval from USA Volleyball, and went out and found a very special director, Amanda Millard, who not only had great playing experience and coaching experience, but is really passionate about the game and helping players get to the next level. So I'd like to hand this over to her and uh, let her get started with the presentation. And actually, Amanda and Chris, I'm going to pull the, the audience. Uh, we've got 40 on now. And so you're going to see on your screen, because we'd like to know where you're coming from, um, and vote, if you would, uh, for any and all things that you do. Uh, right now, we're seeing that we've got you know, coaches, uh, a boys coach, junior girls coach. Uh, we've got about a quarter of the people, a third of the People have now voted in and let us know. And what I'm seeing, Amanda, you, we'll all see this, who we are tonight, but uh, it's basically a third are club directors and two-thirds are girls coaches uh, tonight. And some of them do boys. 10% looks like they're doing boys. Um, some do beach as well. So we're, we're closing in on about 60% uh, voted. And this isn't a hard vote, so. <laughs> 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 this is just going to help me, um, you know, kind of tailor the presentation a little bit. There's a lot of information that I'm going to be going over that's sort of, you know, Volleyball 101. And if we have a lot of coaches who may already know a lot of this information, I might breeze through it 
a little bit more quickly. Um, if, you know, otherwise, if they're just players and parents wanting to get a grasp. Um, all right, well, we're going to uh, close the poll, and you guys okay. should all see it here. Um, on your screens that uh, basically we're kind of one third uh, um, or one quarter even uh, club directors and three quarters girls coaches with a remainder kind of doing beach and everything like that. So that should give you an idea of what we're going to be doing. And I'd like to now, um, I'm going to close the poll and I'm going to send the screen over to um, to Amanda here. So uh, we're going to basically change the presenter to you, Amanda. Okay. And you should be seeing something that says, are you ready to do this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Let me just make sure I'm at the Okay, can you guys see that? I'm just yeah, there you go. From the beginning. Okay, everyone has a full court view. I'm hoping now. You do. Okay, got it. All right, so um, here we go. I'm going to, so we have a lot of coaches on the line. I imagine that probably a lot of you are wanting just some information to be able to like pass on to your girls about how you can help them be successful throughout the process and we kind of you know, went through, broke down the recruiting process, and these are the things that we picked out that we feel, you know, through our own experiences and working with players, parents, and coaches that really can separate and help, you know, the whole recruiting process become a little bit more easier, and then also just, you know, um, being able to get yourself out there. So the things that we want to talk about tonight are the importance of grades. We're going to break down the actual recruiting timeline, talk about what you and your players should be doing as a freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, uh, types of schools, scholarships available, uh, what you guys need to do to actually get recruited as far as like, getting yourself out there, and then ways you can present yourself to the college coaching community, and then how to volleyballrecruits.net, um, you can streamline that whole process and make it much more easy for everyone involved. So that's kind of what we're going to chat about. And again, I invite you guys to ask questions. So there's going to be Q&A at the end, but if you have anything important, then definitely uh, send me a chat, and if it's relevant, we'll cover it. All right. So grades, obviously, we really encourage our, you know, players to take a very, very important look at this, even starting as a very freshman, it opens more doors. Um, one neat kind of thing that we like to talk about is the, the three-point rule, and I'm actually going to let Chris jump in, because that's sort of like his his like baby or the way he explains it and then uh, standardized test. But go ahead and tell them what the three-point rule is, Chris. Sure. What we like to tell um, members and parents throughout the recruiting process is um, really to focus on incremental changes in the GPA. And um, one of the first things that coaches are going to look at when they're evaluating players is the GPA, and it's a sure sign of how hard a student works in the classroom and how committed they are to, obviously, academics, and that carries over to athletics as well. So we focus on the three-point rule, which is if you're a B-minus student, try to go from the 81 to an 84, or if you're a B student, try to get from that 85 to an 88 and to try to set small goals throughout the academic year. Um, we end up speaking with a lot of parents who, you know, oh, if, if my son or daughter could really just get some A's, it would, it would be much better. Their GPA would go up by a lot. And, you know, it's really difficult to kind of set that jump on a um, high school student athlete. So we really try to focus on the three-point rule. Pretty basic, but um, it helps set the parents and the student on a realistic trajectory throughout the recruiting process. Um, so 
I guess I'll also talk a little bit about standardized tests as well. And I'm not sure where um, in the country everybody is from who's on this call, but um, more and more we suggest that players take the SATs and the ACTs so they have more options available. Um, as recruiting has become more accelerated, uh, the timeline for taking the SATs and taking the ACTs has moved towards the middle of the junior year. Um, you know, this is probably six months or nine months earlier than when most of us took the exam, but it allows um, coaches to have a little bit better of an understanding where players are going to fall on the academic ladder. So what we like to say and reinforce is, you know, leave your options open, take an SAT. If the SAT doesn't go well, focus on the ACT. Different students test um, better on different exams. And also look into um, if universities and colleges are flexible in how they use an SAT2 um, into their admissions equation, because there's some schools that are going to be able to take an SAT2 grade and sub that in for, you know, a math, verbal, or writing section of the SAT. So those are just some things to consider with grades. Perfect. That's good. Okay, so parents. You guys, coaches, encourage grades. It's definitely very important. All right, so moving on, the recruiting timeline. Again, we're going to touch on, you know, just, you know, basic things that you should be doing freshman, sophomore, junior, senior year. And I actually put together a recruiting packet. John, are we able to upload that for download? Are we going to follow up with that packet afterwards? Yeah, every person attending tonight will get the uh, recruiting packet emailed to them along with the your and uh, Chris's email address. Perfect. Okay. So there's going to be a lot of detailed information. I'm going to touch on some of it tonight, but it's a perfect reference for you guys to go back to if you have additional questions or just need to kind of reference something. So definitely take advantage of that, and that will be coming shortly after this is finished. So, all right, freshman year. Um, you know, we, Chris just talked about grades. It's extremely important, and that's one thing that we really want to focus on starting in the freshman year is learning good study habits and time management skills. Again, it's just going to be even more important as players enter college, and they're really great thing, you know, things to have under your belt. Coaches look for those things, and it's extremely important. So definitely start those things early in your uh, career. Um, and then we definitely encourage players to start playing club volleyball. Obviously, we have a lot of coaches on this line, and, and we really encourage players to start early so they can lock in those solid fundamental skills. Coaching obviously has a huge um, role in that as well, but the sooner they start, the better fundamental skills they'll have. And in the packet, I talk about the difference between local, regional, and national club teams, and for parents out there, Really, that, that is just a difference between the competitiveness, and there's also some serious financial constraints as well, local being the least competitive type of club program you can pay, play on, and national being the most competitive. Generally speaking, the national level is where um, you're going to see you know, a lot more exposure from college coaches. You'll travel to more of the big national qualifying tournaments that USA Volleyball puts on, and there's other various uh, tournaments that you know, players and coaches and club teams will participate at, but as a general rule, if you want to play on the best club team that you can afford. Um, so, and then obviously starting early in that process just helps kind of uh, put you on the right trajectory. Uh, for parents, you guys might start receiving general informational letters and packets from college programs in the freshman year which are very exciting. Uh, I remember my first letter that I got, and I was, I'm, you know, from the top 10, Pac-10 program, and, um, you know, it's exciting, but it's also not very realistic at this point, and we just want to avoid players and parents mistaking general information letters and packets for a school that's actually recruiting you, because there's a big difference. This is, like, the very first step in the process. Uh, NCAA college volleyball schools are able to send one um, 
general piece of information to a prospective student athlete in their, well, before September 1st of their junior year. So just keep in mind that this is the very first step in the process. Be excited, but don't, you know, don't take this as being actively recruited. And then uh, finally, the freshman year is really just about having fun. I mean, players are extremely young. We really encourage them to make sure, you know, volleyball is a sport that you want to play in college, so make sure it's a fun learning environment. And it's not all about, you know, wins and losses at this level. It's more about learning, developing those good skills, and having a fun time while you're doing it. So that's freshman year. Our sophomore year is, you know, again, we want you to, players to make sure they're staying academically on track. We recommend that they see their guidance counselor at their high school um, to kind of make sure that they're meeting the NCAA regulations, because there are certain core classes that every player needs to take if they're going to be competing at the NCAA level. So meet with your guidance counselor, talk with your coaches, just make sure that academically you're on track and in a um, good uh, trajectory. And then again, play club volleyball. The sophomore year is what I like to say is the year when the men are separated from the boys or the ladies are, uh, or the women are separated from the ladies, if you will. It's really the year, basically sophomore winter until junior winter. So about a year's time when players are going to develop the most in, in terms of strength, flexibility, endurance, um, and you really want to make sure that you guys are on a club program that is helping you guys develop because if you're not playing club volleyball at this level, it's really, really hard to keep up with the players that are. And you know, by the time you reach that junior year, if you're not getting year-round exposure, then it's really, really difficult to catch up. Um, so you know, just make sure that you're enjoying the season, but then also playing on a competitive team. Uh, this is when you start to receive questionnaires generally in your sophomore year. And again, a really exciting time. You want to make sure you fill those out in a really timely manner. Basically, it's just, you know, um, a standard document. Every college program has their list of, or, or their set questionnaire that they send out to prospective student athletes. And you want to make sure you sign, you know, fill those out and return it. Just because this is a, like, sort of the second step in the process where if you fill the questionnaire out and return it, then they know to keep you in their list of potential recruits. If you don't fill it out, then you risk um, you know, them thinking that you may not be interested in their program and then taking you off their list of recruits. And it's okay to uh, parents, players, to send a questionnaire that's not completely filled out at this level. You know, they ask for grades, SAT scores, those things, but if you don't have it, it's okay. Fill it out. And send it back anyway. They'll get to that point next year. And then we also recommend getting game footage, starting to get game footage in your sophomore year. Everyone knows at some point in the recruiting process that you're going to have to provide video to college coaches. It's the number one thing that they ask for. It's the number one thing that they look at. Uh, you can look fantastic on paper for you know, a student, six foot two middle blocker, jumps out of the gym, hits them down the 10 foot line on paper, but they're not going to really be able to make any kind of evaluation that's genuine until they see you, you actually play. So we say, you know, it's a great time to kind of invest in a video camera. Um, if you are, you know, tech savvy or whatever, you enjoy those sorts of things, there's, you can do a lot of video editing yourself. Otherwise, there's, you know, companies like volleyballrecruits.net who can help you um, put together highlight reels and things like that. But the, the first step is to have game footage. If you don't have anything, then it's really hard to go um, put something together when college coaches start asking. So you want to just make sure that you're planning ahead um, and you're starting to get game footage earlier. The earlier, the better. And then we also recommend players start reaching out to college coaches in their sophomore year. Uh, you want to introduce yourself to the college community, but first you kind of have to know a little bit about, A, who you um, want to go play for potentially and, and you know, also how to introduce yourself, which is um, what we're going to talk about in a little bit. But just to kind of give you um, another snapshot, this is kind of general bullet points, and then we'll move into more of that stuff in just a minute. Um, juniors. So this is by far your most important year. Parents, um, definitely, you know, you want to make sure that they're playing on a good club program this year. Playing time is also very important because college coaches are going to start 
wanting to see players in person. And if they're not getting playing time, that's sometimes hard. Video and things like that helps. But you know, exposure is sort of the number one thing that you want to be focused on this year. And um, at this year, you also is when college coaches start asking for that video. So if you did a really good job in your sophomore season and you were able to get match footage, then coming up with these types of video, those video highlight reel unedited game footage becomes very easy. If you didn't, then it's not too late, but it's time to kind of really think about how can I quickly get video if it's your high school. A lot of times high school programs will videotape you know, um, volleyball matches and so you could go to your athletic director and see if that's something that they can provide for you. Otherwise, you want to start getting game footage early in the season. So, you know, most players are about to start their warm-up tournament or they have a couple tournaments that are coming up in the next month. I would definitely recommend if you're a junior and you don't have video, you need to make that a priority. And we're going to talk about the difference between skills videos, highlight reels, and I match footage here in a minute, but just to kind of give you an idea. All right, Kim, Amanda, yeah. just wanted to let everybody know, because we've got a lot of new people that signed on. Uh, oh, sure. You've got a, a, a question box um, over in your little panel, and I've, I've had some questions that have come in that I've answered back, but for any, as we go through, and you can either ask a question that's timely to the stuff she's asking, and if we can answer it right now, or we'll save it for the Q&A at the end. But uh, everybody that's on tonight has a little question thing, and you know, if you hit the plus sign, it'll open up, and you can ask questions. So if you're doing a good job, get back to it. Okay, great. I just want to make sure. How's the, my volume, by the way? Is everyone here? Yeah, much okay? better. Much good. better. Okay, great. All right, so moving along, campus visits. This is really, really important, and a lot of people have a misconception about campus visits. There is no reason why you can't, I mean, you can't start taking campus visits as early as your, um, your freshman year. Most times you hear junior, sophomores and juniors taking campus visits, and, um, but there's no reason why you can't start early. Basically, a campus visit is where you will visit a college campus, You'll hopefully meet with the college coach. You can learn a little bit about their program. We're going to talk more about this um, in a minute, but that's a really important thing to make sure you're doing in your junior year. Also, you need to register with the NCAA Clearinghouse, and this is pretty self-explanatory. It takes about five or ten minutes. You basically go online, and in your recruiting packet, there's a link to the Clearinghouse. Otherwise, if you Google NCAA Clearinghouse, it's really easy to register. Um, you have to provide some of your basic information, and that's it. But college coaches aren't allowed to bring you on any visits until that's done. So make sure you do that. And then Chris already touched on uh, standardized testing, but this is the year that you do that. And we try to encourage players to sign up early, uh, hopefully in the winter, where it's not conflicting with either tournament or um, their club season, because a lot of times they're in the fall. Um, so just take a look at your uh, schedules and try to schedule your standardized testing around that. Um, obviously, and unfortunately, and fortunately, depending on how good of a student you are, everyone has to take it. Um, and it's really important, so make sure you get those on your calendar. And then your junior year, I really want to be active throughout the recruiting process through email and phone, and we'll talk about that a little bit here in a minute, but that's kind of like your you know, five or six things that you really want to make sure you're doing. And finally, senior year, this is kind of when you want to evaluate your situation. Am I happy with the you know, programs that are still actively recruiting me? They say that it's a good rule of thumb to have about five to ten, I, I'm more seven to ten programs that you are actively communicating with. Um, if not, then you, know, you need to kind of evaluate your situation, maybe expand your criteria to other schools, different size schools, different conferences, other divisions, things like that. Uh, and you also, in your senior year, can start taking official visits, and we'll talk about that here in a bit. But the good things, or the important things to know, are you can only take five visits um, in your senior year. So you want to choose wisely, and that's per you know NCAA rules. You're not allowed to take any more than five. And we'll talk about the differences between unofficial and official in a minute. But that's something that you're going to want to do with your, in your senior year. And then also, this will hopefully be the time when you guys are signing. There's a couple different signing periods. There's a fall, which is like the early period, and spring, which is the late period, in your packet. 
it'll it'll explain a little bit about you know those time frames and there's also a link because dates change per calendar year but just know that in your you know if you're committing in your fall um, you know early signing period that's great but don't panic if you're not there's still a lot of time and you know depending on the, the division you know D1 programs taught D1 programs especially, they sign early, but there's a lot of programs with a lot of opportunities, so if you're not signing in the fall, don't panic. There are other opportunities as you move into the spring. And what you actually end up signing is the National Letter of Intent, and basically that just obligates the school to the player and the player to the school. And let's see, uh, this is also another misconception. Parents, I'm talking to you guys, uh, there are no such thing as a four-year scholarship. Um, yes, many players go on a, on a full ride where they end up getting their school paid for for four years. I did that. But it's a contract that you will sign every single year. It's not very common for it to be broken, but just know that going in. Like if you're signing, it's for one year at a time, and then every year you have to renew. So there's senior year. All right, so that sounds like a great plan, but now we have to talk about, okay, how do I actually put this into action, you know, and part of that is knowing, first of all, what the opportunities are. I've already touched on a few things about NCAA, but there's other opportunities available. Um, the NCAA has about a thousand programs that consist of Division One, Division Two, and Division Three. There's also the NAIA which is about 250 programs. There's no division separations, but it's a great opportunity to play volleyball. And the NC or NJCAA is what is considered like the junior college. Um, there's about 305 programs, and those are also split up into Division One, Two, and Three. And we're going to talk about scholarship opportunities at each of those. So NCAA programs, there are 12 full rides that are available per team. It's considered a headcount sport, which means a player can go on a full ride where they get everything, tuition, room and board, books, fees, um, meals, everything paid for, and you either get it or you don't. And that's what headcount sport means. You really can't split it up. Uh, that's different than like a Division II program where you have actually eight full rides that are available. This is, however, called an equivalency sport, which means uh, coaches can split up the scholarship sort of per the coach's discretion. Um, but it also can be combined with academic or need-based. So even though Susie might be on half the scholarship and Jenny is on the other half of the scholarship, you know, doesn't mean that Jenny, and I can't remember who my other person was now, <laughs> that it can't end up getting a full ride based on need-based or academic. So there's a lot of scholarship opportunities that may not look as much as D1 uh, at first glance, but they try to work with players and parents, especially if you're a good student, uh, to try to get you to that full ride level. Division three, there are no academic scholars, or there, I'm sorry, there are no athletic scholarships available. They don't offer them. However, you can qualify for academic or need-based. So again, if you're a good student, this is a really great option for you. Um, and a lot of times, especially if you're a good student, they really work with you, I mean, because a lot of times these programs are, are very good programs, they tend to be expensive, but, you know, if they're trying to get a student athlete into that school, or even just any school, you know, a lot of times 50% or more of the students are on some kind of academic aid. So keep that in mind, and generally, I like you said, it's a very, very good education. So this would be for somebody who is a very good student and to focus on um, academics, but we also want to be able to have the opportunity of playing volleyball in college. The NCAA is generally more strict than NEIA or JC programs um, in the fact that they have regulations on when they can and can't contact players. And this is to protect you guys. And, you know, because, you know, the last thing you want is a college coach, especially for the elite players, banging down their doors, you know, every two seconds, you know, so basically soliciting their programs. Um, so the NCAA has put regulations uh, to kind of make sure that you guys have your privacy and so they're not allowed to reach out to you until you're a September 1st of your junior year and when I say reach out that means in terms of email or letters so anything in writing they're not allowed to write you um, 
about anything recruiting related, you, you are again allowed to receive that one letter that's just general information, but nothing recruiting related. Um, and then coaches are not allowed to call you until July 1st of your junior year. So that's actually the summer before your senior year, and you'll get one call per week. Um, all right, so that's kind of rules and regulations and scholarships. NAIA, a little bit different. There's no division separations, like I said. There are scholarships available, eight per team, and they can, again, be provide, um, divided by the coach's discretion. Um, and they actually don't have any contact rules uh, as far as reaching out to players, which is, you know, kind of nice if you're an NIA coach, you know, you can kind of reach out to whoever, whomever, whenever you want. However, you know, they, they tend to kind of follow what the NCAA guidelines are, so you don't see that too often, but there's nothing illegal about that. So make sure, you know, if you are getting reached out by an NIA program that you understand the difference. But there's nothing wrong about it as far as their, their uh, sort of sponsorship is concerned. And then we have NJCAA programs, which are junior colleges. And they are, again, split into D1, D2, D3. 14 will rise to the D1 program, which includes room and board and tuition. D2 is the same, 14 full rise, but it only includes tuition. Um, room and board is not included. And then Division three, there's kind of, again, no athletic money, but academic and need-based are available. And you see a lot of players who go to junior colleges, um, you know, people, players who need maybe help with their GPA up, who may have D1, D2 potential, but are really just needing a boost into their, um, to get their grade point average up again, and then they'll transfer to a four-year college after their sophomore season. And there's a lot of transfer rules that I, I'm not going to touch on tonight, but if you are in a position where you're thinking about that, just make sure you know what the transfer rules are, because they're, they tend to be strict, so you want to make sure that you're eligible before you start reaching out to new programs. All right, so that was kind of all the facts. Um, now we want to talk about, all right, how do I actually get myself out there? And there's a couple things that you just need to kind of have in order to be a, you know, um, I don't want to say, well, it's just in order for you to, like, be, um, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Um, like, promising to a college program. So one is you need to have talent. Um, parents and coaches, I mean, everyone knows that this is a business. And, you know, when you're going to play volleyball, especially if you're going on a scholarship, then coaches look at you as you're an employee. You know, I went and, you know, my job was to play volleyball in college. It was the best job I ever had. No offense, Chris is actually my boss, but, you know, <laughs> it's a wonderful time. And, but you just need to keep in mind that it's a commitment, and it is, you are there to do your job. You have a role um, as part of your team, and so you need to make sure that you understand that going in. Coaches really want to see team players, too. Attitude is extremely important. It's not all about talent. Um, you know, you, they are committing to you on a four-year basis and vice versa, and so they want to make sure that they have team players, people that they can get along with, which is why really athletics kind of translates into the real world because these things are all um, very important regardless of what team or, you know, what company that you're working with. You need to be extremely proactive throughout the process. Um, and this is, I'm talking directly to parents and, and players right now. If you wait until the last minute, you will miss out. There are so many players out there and the recruiting process has gotten so much more competitive. Uh, even since when I was playing, I mean, for goodness sakes, there were 12 year olds jump serving at um, junior, you know, at the day and C's over the summer. I don't think I learned how to jump serve until I was in college. I mean, it's just insane. So, anyway, you just want to make sure you're putting yourself out there as soon as you can. Um, and I would say if you're waiting until you're the end of your junior year, then you're way behind schedule. You need to absolutely get your information to college coaches very quickly. And I'm going to show you here in a second how our tool makes that very realistic and very easy to do. Um, but just so you know, like, pro kind of being prepared, being proactive is the name of the game. Um, just, oh, well, I said, I told you how many players there were. Oops, um, 150,000 players competing for positions, 20,000 of those are in the senior class. So just keep in mind that's a lot of players. 
All right, and then you have to get exposure. That's something that Volleyball Recruit Center helps with, definitely, but you know, coaches don't recruit players if they don't know exist. 100% of the time, you will not get recruited if a coach doesn't know who you are. So, you know, coaches, that's something that I know you guys help with. You have certain relationships with college programs. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, you guys can definitely help in, in that area, but it's not all up to you. By any means, really, the responsibility is on the player and the parent. We try to encourage that you guys are there to be mentors, uh, not recruiting agents. But either way, however you're doing it, you need to get exposure. Um, some other ways that you tend to do that are through tournaments. Uh, and just so you guys know, um, you know, coaches don't really care what team or what division that you're competing in, whether it's a club or open division. They want to see how you are as a player. Um, and so, you know, also your wins and losses don't necessarily matter. But yes, your attitude does matter. They're looking for those team players, those leaders, people who can communicate, people who don't get super down, you know. Um, you know, if they're you know, mess up or they shank a ball, it's, you know, moving right on to the next play. So those are kind of things that they look for. And then also summer camps. This is actually one way that I really increased my exposure when I was going through the process that I went to, I, I went to the University of Denver, and I ended up going to their summer camp, which is where I got a ton of exposure. And it's a really great thing because you as a player can get to know the coach, the program, um, you know, you get to eat in the cafeteria, do all those things that you would on like an unofficial visit, but you're also in a practice setting. So coaches then can see, you know, how are you reacting? Are you a team player? Are you, you know, communicating well? Do you listen to direction? Things like that. So I would say, you know, if you can go to at least one to five summer camps each season, to obviously the programs that you're really interested in too. One, it shows coaches that you're genuinely interested in their program. And, you know, if they think, well, you know, that might be a really good fit for our program, I'm all, you almost guarantee that you'll move up in their recruiting list. And then, again, coaches aren't, um, <clears throat> you must take responsibility. I, I mentioned this before, but just to reiterate, um, coaches and parents are not your recruiting agents. They're there to be mentors. You're there to help your, your student athletes. But, you know, most likely, you guys already went to college, already have an education, so this is their future. So you want to push the responsibility onto players because really, if they're invested in the process, then they're going to, you know, just have a better experience overall. Um, all right. <clears throat> so. Hey, Amanda. Yeah. Hey, I got a couple questions from people. Sure. Coming in. So why don't we? Uh... Randall Hunt asks, I'm often told that no one gets a, quote, full ride scholarship for their freshman year, yet I had a coach recently offer my daughter a full scholarship. How, do, how often do schools offer, quote, full rides to freshmen, or is this more common than some people think? Um, that's a good question. And I, I touched on this maybe a little bit differently. So a full ride would mean tuition books, uh, fees, um, you know, meals, any, anything like that, pretty much all fees associated besides the money, really. And um, <clears throat> full ride to one, one is basically covered for one year. And as a freshman, I mean, I would say that depending on the division, if you're talking, you know, D, D1 programs, they're trying to recruit the best athletes it's very common for them to offer scholarships in the freshman year. Um, you know, maybe D2 or D3 levels, they, they want to see kind of maybe how you pan out. And then if you, you know, meet their, you know, certain criteria, they think you're doing a good job, then maybe they'll offer you a scholarship. But I would be wary of that because any coach that promises you, hey, well, just walk on your freshman year and then you know, maybe in our sophomore and junior year, we'll, we'll get you a scholarship money. That tends to disappear because they're always looking for the next best thing. They're always looking for how they can improve their programs. And, you know, I would say if a coach really, really wants a player, then they're going to incentivize them to come to the school from the very beginning. All right. Um, and Alexis asks, can you clarify the contact by coaches in the student athletes junior year if they can email you after September 1 but can't call you until July prior to your senior year how do you handle the college visits right so here's the thing 
you and it gets a little fuzzy and, and it's always very confusing because per, per the NCAA rules, colleges are NCAA programs at least, are not allowed to contact contact means any kind of in-person contact of a phone call, a letter, any kind of um, interaction is, is basic, the basic definition. And they're not allowed to do that until September 1st. However, there's kind of ways around that. I mean, you know, if a college program is really interested in a player, they might work through the club coach and, um, you know, hey, have Becky call me at this time. I'll be waiting with my phone. And, and here's the thing, because players can always call or email or go on visits anytime they want. So they can call <laughs> a coach if the coach picks up. Um, then they can talk about whatever they want for however long they want because they are, this player is the one who's initiating the contact. They can also send um, information, their video, you know, information about their player, which is what we'll show you in a minute how you can do that through uh, volleyballrecruit.net. But that's, that's kind of the fuzzy line, like no colleges can't call you or contact you, but you can call coaches and contact them however much you want. Okay, and one last question from Scott Dillingham. How does texting count in relation to contacts, parentheses, email, phone calls, etc.? Yeah, this is kind of, this is a really good question. Um, and to be completely honest, I'm still not 100% sure, sure on the rules. It's um, kind you know of... I'll, I'll actually take this. Um, oh, good, so, okay. Yeah, so the NCAA actually ruled that text messages were seen in the same light as telephone calls. So based on the September 1 date that Amanda mentioned um, in a player's junior year, they can receive emails and letters from the coaches, but you aren't allowed to receive text messages until that July 1 date going into senior year. All right, we've got a couple other questions, but let's get rolling on what you got left. Okay. I just want to touch on one thing too, that there's also a rule um, where if you are getting email on your phone and if it comes into your phone, that would be considered a text message as well. So like if you're getting coach sends you an email, the email shows up on your phone, you read it, that would be like a phone call because that technically you're reading it like a text message. So, you know, it's a good idea not to link that if you're going through the recruiting process. Um, so if you guys have questions about that, you can, you can, uh, shoot me an email afterwards because that, that can be kind of confusing. Um, all right, so we are talking about now, okay, how do I go about, you know, giving my information to coaches, I know what I need to do, I know about the programs, how do I do it now? So the first thing you need to do is develop a player profile, we call this your volleyball resume. Basically, it's all the information that coaches would ever need to know about you in one convenient location. So your contact information, your position, your statistics, what tournaments are you going to be traveling to, and rewards that you've received, and your academics, and then definitely you absolutely want to link to video, especially if this is in like the end of your sophomore slash junior season, of, of course, senior year, if you're not, you know, <clears throat> in contact with coaches and happy about your recruiting process. But the idea is you want to provide all of this information to college coaches so they can easily and very uh, quickly make an evaluation of you. So that's step one. Put your information together. Two. Okay, it looks like we lost Amanda for a second. She'll be back in one second. Yeah, I don't see her. <laughs> okay. Hey, are you there? I oh, there she I is. Just <laughs> yes. I, I'm back. I, my, sorry, I think I fixed something. Okay, so get video. Um, Types of video, there's there's basically three types of video, and it really depends on the program, what they want. So we recommend people be, um, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, that they're prepared with all three types. So the first is a skills tape, which is drill-like, um, you know, personal, and it's good to have like a personal introduction, so it's kind of face with name. Basically, it's one to two minutes per skill. I'm actually going to show you guys an example here in just a second, but let me, let me show you first, um, talk about it, and then I'll show you. So skills tape, feel like, we'll, we'll see that in a second. Uh, number two is a highlight reel, which is basically a compilation of all of your best plays taken from your match footage, which is another reason why it's really important to start 
you know, taking that footage early because the more footage you have, the better your highlight reel will be. Try to keep it, you know, a reasonable amount of time. This is a way to hook coaches to hopefully have them come see you play in person. So you want your highlight to be no more than 48 minutes long. And we at volleyballrecruits.net say it's best to have 15 to 20 clips because anything more than that is redundant. Coaches are professional evaluators. That's basically part of their job. So um, you know, keep it short and kind of to the point. And then unedited game footage is, you know, basically unedited, it's just what it says, unedited match footage. But you can pause the camera to avoid like downtime, including timeouts, shagging, time between games. You know, coaches don't care if you eliminate that. So let me show now John, if I hit escape, I think. Yeah, to everybody tonight, this is a new technology we're bridging here to see if we can get you to see. Yeah, I just want to minimize this one. so I can get to my example. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. So here, I'm going to show you guys just a minute or two of uh, the different time, the types of video. This is actually one that we put together. And uh, can you guys see that okay? So far, so good. Okay. So basically what we do is we, you just saw that title slide and what Volleyball Recruits on it does, we will break it up per um, skill so coaches can easily kind of switch in and out between, okay, I just want to see serving or I just want to see blocking or whatever. And, um, <coughs> the basic idea is you want it to be, you know, your five best balls in a row. So you're showing coaches your fundamentals, how consistent you are. Um, and if you can do that, you know, again, five times in a row. So this is an example of a player who's on our site who put together a really good skills video. So that was five balls in a row, and then you switch to another uh, angle, and again, five balls in a row. And it is and choppy, like I said it might be. It's kind of coming across as a, as a fast power okay. for a slideshow more than it is video. Yeah. All right. Well, hopefully... The point being, I want you guys to see how it, how it's set up, that it's a practice-like drill. So hopefully we could at least, uh, we, will, we can see that. So I won't show you guys a highlight reel just because, you know, I don't want to, if you guys aren't able to see it, we will try again when we're doing our demo. But the idea is it's, you know, four to eight minutes, your best play. So give coaches what they want to see. It's your, your way of getting them to come see you play in person. So let's go back, make this big now. Okay. All right, so there's a couple different places you can get film. Uh, one would be videographers at tournaments. I know we're working, well, at USA Volleyball, we always are at the Junior National Championships with videographers taking professional high-definition footage. And it's likely that some of the major tournaments that you guys are going to, that they'll have videographers. We're kind of in negotiations right now to be at some of the major national qualifiers, so hopefully we'll see you there. Um, and, you know, the thing is, match footage, regardless of what player you're trying to highlight, should be the exact same. So teams can actually share in the costs. If you have, like, a team mom to help organize that kind of thing, it makes it much less expensive than you trying to buy, you know, five games or three games all by yourself if you kind of divvy up the costs. Then it becomes much more affordable. Everyone has great-looking footage. And parents, you guys are great videographers. So um, we definitely, when we're working with, footage anyway, I would say 85% of it, and Chris, you can tell me if that's accurate, but most of it is parent-submitted footage. And the great thing about volleyball is it's actually really easy to take video footage. You get a camera, you put it on a tripod, you stick it on the end line, and you watch your flying balls, you know, time, pause it to avoid, you know, timeouts and things like that. But that's about it. There's not too much um, involved. I know it's way more difficult or way more easy than lacrosse is to shoot. So you guys should feel really good about that. Um, and then again, start early and that's really kind of the whole idea of this whole presentation is, you know, make sure you're prepared um, in the whole process. So let's see, club programs, I don't know how many of you help with skills video, but it's a really wonderful thing to provide for your uh, players, at least the footage, you know, and um, if players and parents, if you guys have a club program who does provide that service and I would definitely take advantage of it. We can edit any kind of footage, whether it's a skills video or a highlight reel, but you definitely need to get the footage again. 
Um, that's sort of the number one step. All right. And then step three is you got to figure out, all right, so now I have a complete pro profile. I have um, uh, my video together. Now I need to start reaching out to college programs. And you want to do that by just figuring out what's important to you. You know, do you want to go to a program that is, you know, big or small? Um, are any regional specifications important? Close to home, far away? Are you looking for a school that's very academically selective? Ivy League or junior college, you know, and then again, what division? Um, there's a couple ways you guys can go about it. Um, if you go sort of old school way and you're looking up these things program by program, it's extremely time intensive, and I would definitely not recommend it because that's what I did, and it was awful. <laughs> um, and you just you miss out on so many opportunities. Otherwise, there's books available. I know U.S. News and World Report puts out a book, uh, Best Colleges, and kind of talks about facts. Or you can, you know, sign up with a recruiting tool like volleyballrecruits.net, which literally basically just, um, you know, does that whole process for you, takes all the legwork out of it, where all you're needing to do is know what's important to you, and then <coughs> the programs. And I'm going to show you that demo here in a second. But just kind of keep in mind, um, there are better ways to do it than um, the old school way, trust me. And just to tell you guys how old I was, I actually sent VHS, VHS tapes out in the mail. So <laughs> um, that was a long time ago. All right, so I'm going to kind of breeze over unofficial versus official visit. This is all very clearly laid out in your recruiting packet that you're going to get. Um, so I'll just touch on a couple things. Uh, some of the most important things are visits are always considered unofficial if you're doing that before your senior year. Players and parents, you are responsible for all expenses associated with the visit. You can take as many as you want to as many programs as you like. And you just want to make it's an opportunity really for you guys to see life on campus, what the coaches is like. Um, this is when verbal commitments are made. And I'll, you know, a verbal commitment is basically a verbal contract stating that, yes, I'm going to go to your program. Um, and they're, they're very rarely made, although they're not binding, but they're really broken. Um, and then, you know, again, this is your one chance to ask questions, so make sure that you guys are doing that. There's some uh, examples of questions you can ask coaches and questions that you should be prepared for in the packet. So I know that was quick, but we want to make sure we have time to, you know, show you guys um, the demo, so I'm going to kind of move quickly through. Uh, all right, so official visit. You can only take official visits during your senior year. Anything before that time, again, is unofficial. You can only take one visit per school, and you can take up to five visits total. So you want to make sure you're choosing wisely. And really the only difference between the, well, the main difference between unofficial and official is who's paying for it. The unofficial visit, the school is paying for all of your expenses. Um, the unofficial, you are paying for your expenses. So. You know, you just want, definitely want to make sure you're spending time with the younger players because that's who's going to be your, you know, teammates and for the most part of your time. Um, see so your practice, go to an event, you know, sit down in a class, make sure they provide your major, things like that. All right. And then and step four is once you have an idea of who you want to go to, then it's time to actually reach out to programs. And you can start doing this as early as your sophomore year. We definitely recommend that you do so. If you know where you want to go to college, start early. There's no reason why you can't contact programs and let them know you're interested. So the, you know, the way you want to do that is through like an introductory letter. Basically, it's all of your facts, all of your personal information. And um, it's facts. You want it to be fact-based, not, hey, I'm a really hard worker and I love volleyball, those things can't be measured, really. So you want to make it short, kind of to the point, and make sure that it's fact-based. Um, there's an example of an introductory letter in your packet that you can kind of read through and uh, kind of use it as a template. And then once you are you've been introduced to programs, then you want to just make sure you're being very active, following up with them on a you know, consistent basis. Letting them know about your achievements, your travel schedule, and then again, link to video is very, very important because I promise that as soon as you reach out to a college program, the first thing they're going to say is if they don't have video, is like, great, you sound awesome on paper, but let me see video. So just be, be prepared with that going ahead of time. 
And again, you can email and phone call coaches whenever you would like. All right, so here we are. Now we're to the good part. Does anyone have any questions quickly before I, I go into this demo? Because I'm going to show you basically how to take everything that we just talked about and um, put it into action through volleyballrecruits.net. Yeah, so far no questions have come bouncing in really other than... Uh, right. Yeah. Okay. We answered most of them. We've got a couple at the very end, but uh, take it away. Okay. Got it. Okay, so um, technology is your friend. Here we go. Uh, let me just get to... You guys can all still see my screen, I see. All right. So here's volleyballrecruits.net. Again, we're the official recruiting tool of USA Volleyball. This, I wanted to show you this because this is our home page. Um, you can learn a little bit more. Or here's our recruiting guide. Information like this will be up on our website. You can learn more about you know, how we got started. There's examples of highlight reels, which I would encourage you guys to see because I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see the one I show you very well. But we try to keep you know, a lot of information um, up on our website and for people to get a really good understanding of what we're all about. So, you know, definitely if you have questions you want to learn more, I would recommend going to this page. Now I'm actually going to log into a player. This is actually our, our, our dummy player. We just kind of created her out of thin air. Her name's Kelly Palmer. But we're going to log into her profile so I can show you exactly how you would go about using a volleyballrecruits.net package. So the first step is obviously to sign up. And then you would just simply fill out your player profile. And you do that by going to edit button. And then you, this is like all of your facts. So all those things that I was saying that college coaches need from you in one convenient location, this is where you would put it. Um, and we actually got these fields, or we decided to put these fields in here based on communications that we have with college coaches from all across the divisions, like uh, Chris was talking when they were doing their initial you know, um, research for the site. So they're all here for a reason. It's what you need to know. All right, so you kind of go through with all your, your contact information, your parents' information, your positioning, um, your statistics, coaches' contact information, height, weight, what club you play for, and uh, what tournament you're going to be attending. This is really great because college coaches actually search these fields as well so they can figure out where you're going to be playing in person. And then all of your academic information, which we know by now is extremely important. So pretty much what you are on paper. And then, since you guys have done such a great job collecting video, you simply upload it um, right to your player profile. And, and through Volleyball Recruits on that, you can actually upload an unlimited amount of video. So, you know, skills videos, game footage, however much you like. Chris is paying for it, so you guys might as well take advantage of it. Yeah, it's on me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so once you have a complete profile, we would consider a complete profile one that had obviously all the fields filled out, skills video, highlight reel, unedited game. That's complete. And then it's like, okay, we've got to start searching for schools. And basically, here's what you type in. What's, what do I want out of a college experience? So when I was going through the, the process, I wanted a Division one school. I wanted it to be a very good school, so academically more or most selective. And I didn't really care the size of it, but I know I wanted to get out of Texas. <laughs> um, actually, that's not true. Most of the schools I was looking at were in Texas. But I wanted to go somewhere on the West Coast. So that would have been my criteria. So it's really easy. Just a few clicks, you can hit search, and you'll get a list of all of those schools, actually two pages of schools, that fit that criteria. And let's say, well, you know what? Actually, I do care about size of school. Let's say I, I just don't want to go to a small school. Oops, I'm sorry. I don't want to go to a small school. So, you know, I could eliminate those options and you can really change whatever your search criteria are by using the filters on the left over here. So, okay. Let's say that, all right, um, Baylor. I actually almost went to Baylor. So let's say that would have been a school on my list, actually. So what you would do to send your information to them is simply click on the school. Um, this gives you some general information about their program. You can click on um, the link here to, that will take you right to the athletic site to learn a little bit more about their program. Um, but all you have to do to actually get your information to them is click send a message. And we have database every single NCAA college volleyball program in the country. 
is a member of bylaw or recruits and that so you guys literally have access to any college coach that you could think of. Um, we're working on databasing NEIA schools and JC schools. We actually have an intern coming in this winter, so that'll be a project that <laughs> she's going to work on. Um, but the majority of schools, over a thousand, are in our, our system right now, so you can be every single um, program. So here, you just enter, you know, whatever your message is. Um, and I'm not actually going to send Coach Barnes a message because our system is live right now. But I do want to show you what it looks like when a message comes in. So I'm going to search for Volleyball University which is a school that obviously does not exist. Um, it's one that we just made for the sake of demos. I'm actually their head coach. Um, but players, you know, parents tell your players not to send me a message because I won't be recruiting them. But anyway, so the process is the same. You click on the school, you come down, hit send a message. We're going to click, oh, we're going to call this message test. You can name the subject line anything you want. And this is all the reasons why you should recruit me. Um, like any other email and then you just hit send. And that's literally how easy it is. You would do that with all the programs on your list. And I'm going to show you what that actually looks like uh, when you go in to a school. So I'm going to log into Volleyball University's Gmail account. So this would be like coach, head coach of Animal Iron, logging into your email. And I'm going to show you what that message looks like. And here we go. Here's our message. So Kelly Palmer was, again, as a reminder, the girl we were logged into. And um, the thing that's great about this is, you know, coaches really like when players are the ones who are making, doing the initiative. And so it looks as this message came directly from Kelly Palmer. It doesn't come from, like, volleyball recruits or, you know, random recruiting tool.net or whatever. So the coach would click on the message like any other email. All, oops, I spelled B wrong. All the reasons why you should recruit me. And then this, this is the kind of beauty of our system. In every message that leaves the system, there is a um, link that will take a coach directly to the player profile. We didn't have to do anything. It just automatically generates this message and this link. So when I click on it as a coach, I am automatically logged in. Um, Volleyball Recruits recognizes all of our coaches and brings them directly to the profile so they're not having to remember login or passwords. And you you know, basically I have literally all of her information and video in one click. So I went from not knowing anything potentially about that player to having everything that I could ever want to know about her. And we're gonna to try to play this highlight reel. And if you guys are having a hard time seeing this, then let me know. But basically it's a title slide the thing I want you guys to just notice is that when we put together highlight reels, we use isolation effects in each clip to help it you know, be really easy for college coaches to zero in on that player. Um, can you guys see that okay? It's a little jumpy, but it, it's going it's a little well. jumpy, but you guys get the idea. So basically, you know, as a coach, I can click on our video and say, huh, okay, well, she she's a good player. I think I want to add her to my, you know, list of favorites or I want to reply to her message or I'll add her to my top players, request DVD. This is actually to show you, this is what co college coaches see so they can actually find the player. Um, all those fields that you entered in um, on your side of the profile is all searchable, like I said. So let's say we want to search 2012s. Um, you know, you could, you know, that coach, me, Cook Man, Y, whatever, could actually, you know, see a list of all these players in, in one click. And here's actually another another gal that we created a, a highlight video for. But, I mean, I think you guys get the point. And we're pretty close. Actually, we're a couple minutes over. So I'm going to end it there. Is there anything, Chris, that you wanted to touch on um, to wrap up? I mean, basically, the idea is, you know, the system is extremely easy. It makes it very, very easy for coaches to evaluate you, and it makes it extremely easy for you to get your information to coaches. Well, I'll tell you, um, we've got a couple people that have been asking now that we're closing down the webinar. Um, Dixie asked, yeah. how much does the Volleyball Recruits website cost per girl to use and become a member? And Floyd mm -hmm. asked, I assume boys can use Volleyball Recruits also, right? And what is the cost? So, Yeah, OK, definitely. Um, that, those are both great questions. I'll actually show you where you would find all the information. 
Um, boys and girls are both, and, and all the NCAA boys programs are registered users of our of our lower net as well. So yes, both boys and girls can use the site. So on the home page, you'll these are all the tabs. If you go to get started, um, that's where you'll find all the program and all, all the pricing information. And basically, we package it in a few different ways. Um, one is you know how much. Well, here's the thing. All the functionality, all the packages, here they are, bronze, silver, gold, platinum, all the functionality of the site is exactly the same. So everything that I just showed you is available um, in each of the packages. The only difference in price and package is how much video editing work we are going to do. So we have a really great team of video experts who are in-house. They've put together all of those um, you know, videos that I showed you, I know it's a little bit jumpy, but if you guys go to the highlight tab, you'll be able to see some of the work that we've done. Um, I know on the lacrosse side, they've done, God, I don't know, 1,500 highlight reels, so we're experts at this, we know what we're doing. Um, and so that's really the only difference. So bronze packages, uh, a year membership, silver package would be where we're editing the skills video, the gold package is where we're editing your highlight, and the platinum package is we're doing all of your video editing work. And just so you guys know, one new feature that we just launched is a create your own highlight feature, and this comes standard with any of the packages, where you're actually able to string together your own highlight reels directly from volleyballrecruits.net. So a lot of parents would prefer to have a professional do it, but if you're tech savvy and you want to take that on, it's actually very user friendly. And um, basically you just upload your video Kind of, it's a drag and drop feature where you're able, you're able to select your timestamp. Does that answer you guys' questions, hopefully, about pricing? I guess just one other thing that I'll uh, chime in on is um, we do work with club programs to provide uh, group pricing, which um, we'd be more than happy to discuss on an individual basis. You can just shoot Amanda or myself an email. Yeah. And uh, when we do work with club programs directly, um, it's you know pretty very affordable actually, and we're able to actually create team pages for you guys where when players are going through and filling out their information, um, if they select your club program, they're automatically added to your team page, which you then have admin control over, and so you're kind of able to manage the recruiting process for your players and. Again, I can kind of show you that if you, if you guys are interested. Okay, Alexis asks, are we the owner of the videos if you purchase that? Yes. Okay. And Dixie asks, do colleges pay to use this service, or is it free for colleges to use this to recruit players? Uh, it's free for the college coaches, which is why they love it. A, we make it extremely easy for them, and B, it's free. So and there's that, no reason. Um, Go ahead. Another quick note on um, any video that we produce, um, it gets loaded directly to players' profiles, and we also provide hard copies of DVDs to keep as mementos and things like that down the road. Excellent. Um, you know, I think, uh, and let's see, Jalen's asking, this is kind of Q&A time. I, I know your PowerPoint yeah. has the Q and A part, so oh yeah, more. Um, my son is a senior. Realistically, is it too late to start the steps, Jalen uh, Watkins? Well, I mean, I'll I'll, a, I'll a take son. that for a second here. Yeah, go for it. The recruiting process is so <laughs> Jalen, my son is going to Princeton to play Division One volleyball, um, and he really didn't start growing. Um, on, and make his decision between lacrosse and volleyball and tennis until he was a senior. And so at the end of his senior year at JO's is when he started to, the process to be recruited. Um, and he actually took a gap year. Um, to those of you that have sons out there, you know, we know that guys mature later. And um, the idea came from Dr. Kyra McGowan, the head coach formerly at BYU, who said, uh, you know, knowing that I'm pretty tall and Cody likely was going to be tall, said, well, why don't you just sit him out of here and have him do something really important and and uh, see if he grows up a little bit. And, and that's exactly what happened. He's now 6'5", and he's going to be, he got accepted to Princeton. So 
senior year is uh, is an okay thing. Yeah, especially for the guys, like like you said, oops, um, the guys they mature so much later, and so it's very very common. Basically, everything is delayed about a year. So you know, as a junior, your coaches are making decisions about girls. As a senior, the guys' programs are making decisions about the boys. Uh, Tanya, you can sign off, no problem. Um, do you have local reps that can come out to schools and discuss this process? Ask Robert Johnston. Um, we don't. However, we try to be really, I mean, you guys can call me. We have my contact information, Chris's information. I mean, we're all over the site. So, I mean, it's my cell phone number. If you guys ever have any questions about anything recruiting related, the tool, we want to talk about your daughter. We try to make ourselves really available. Um, we can get you in touch. Uh, sometimes, like, depending on certain regions, we have relationships with video video guys who can like help get you guys some footage if that's what you're interested in. But as far as general information about um, you know volleyball recruits on a district basis, then we don't. But again, you know, we're well, to just help so we can. Some quick input on that is um, I. We're always available um, to do online recruiting seminars and things like that if we could work on putting together something like this with your team. Or we also travel extensively throughout the year to different events in different regions where it might work out that we'd be able to piggyback an event with um, coming and doing a seminar. So I'd say it's a case-by-case -case basis, but it's not totally out of the question. Yeah. Anything else you guys? Uh, one last one came in. Um, uh, let's see, it says, can you grade the profiles? Most recruited in the Midwest, ETC. I'm not sure what that means, but. Um, so I'll, I'll actually take this. Um, currently, we don't have um, a grading um, system, but we're working on some site upgrades where we'll provide a number of analytics to um, members of the site. And that will be. Um, how many times their profile's been viewed, how many times video's been viewed, by what conferences the profile's been viewed, and then breaking it down onto a lower level of are you the most viewed um, outside hitter you know, in the state or in the region. Um, but that's all going to be information that um, the member is going to be used. Um, we aren't going to use that to grade certain players over other players for college coaches at this stage. All right, well, I'm just getting things like my daughter's an eighth grader, and <clears throat> this has been really helpful and awesome. Thanks, and thanks for the webinar from Jenny Kruger and things like that. So I well, we appreciate you guys' attention. <laughs> Don't see any questions coming in for this other than, you know, lots of thanks. Um, and Matt Good. does a great job, Amanda. Alexis Thank Smith you. wonders how many members you might have. Um, and Margo Darris asks, some of the girls aren't the best players and just want to play volleyball at the next level. How do they know what types of schools they should apply for? Um, we, you know, we, as well answer um, the first question first about number of members. So we're getting new members constantly. Every day we have new people signing up. This tool launched in um, August. Is that right? We made our official launch. We're doing testing yeah. and, and things. And um, we made uh, USA Volleyball sent out the press release at the end of August. And since that time, I mean, we have, I don't actually, Chris, do you know the actual number? Yeah, members? so we have, we have slightly over 200 girls members who have signed up, um, that number on the boy side is slightly smaller, um, you know, about um, 50 to 60. And I think that's pretty representative of kind of the general size of both populations. Yeah, and that's just been since August. So, I mean, we get, and especially at when the new recruiting, as the recruiting 
uh, season, or not just the recruiting, in the club volleyball season, um, this has been a really good month for us uh, so far. And uh, when we start working with club programs too, where they're you know wanting to work with us as a, on a club basis, then that really helps with our numbers as well. But um, and then let's see the second question. Would you remind me? I'm sorry. Was let's see the second question was. Uh... I think I've already deleted it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh -oh. if you I'm have getting that more question, questions coming in. So we've got um, you rock, Amanda. Thanks for all you do. Did I understand correctly? You'll get the information emailed to us, and I, yes, we're sending the info packet. And uh, and did you? And that's pretty much what's going on. Um, okay. If you are still <laughs> alive and you missed your question. <laughs> yeah. Please uh, either email me or you can send it. I apologize. Um, too much information. Uh, All right. Well, I think um, you know. Uh, Kim is letting me know that that she just had the maddest game of Candyland ever played, which is uh, <laughs> for all of you that have never uh, the concept. There, we did a clinic back in um, some hit and mitten, as I recall, but. The concept is to bring back kids' games um, as scoring methods. So the simplest one is to play tic-tac-toe. The, the, my, my kid's favorite is hangman. Um, I do connect four. And um, in her case, Kim's doing Candyland as part of the scoring. You know, and when you get a point, you get to move the Candyland thing. And Kids love winning games that they couldn't win when they were <laughs> when they were a little younger. So, yeah. uh, thanks for for the, the stuff, Kim, because it's kind of fun to close out tonight with with that kind of story. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, oh, well, yeah, the question was from Elroy. The second question was about average girls yeah. wanting to play at the next level. What schools to target? Okay, I would say. Um, you know, here's the thing, the power programs, Big 12, Pac-10, SEC, you know, those basically um, football programs that you think about, those are where the elite girls are going to go. So that's top D1 programs. And D1 level is kind of is a little weird because they have like the power programs, they have a mid-major, and then they have a lower D1. And it's unfortunate because there's no literature that, that defines these. You just kind of have to know if to bring research. We can definitely help, but for the average player who still wants to play, you know, volleyball in college, then I would recommend, you know, looking at some like mid to lower D1, definitely D2, um, and maybe NAI programs would be a really good start. Um, you know, generally really strong volleyball players who maybe just don't have the height, but they're solid players. They, they just, you know, that would be a D2 player. And to be honest. Some of the top D2 programs, and a really great way to figure out who those are is going to the USA uh, website or the NCAA website and clicking on championships, and it'll kind of, the championship bracket, those are your power programs, you know. So some of the top D2 programs can absolutely beat up on some of the lower D1 programs, and they're very, very good volleyball programs. They sometimes have better facilities um, because, you know, some of the D1 programs are, um, sending a lot of that funding to like their basketball and their football programs. And so don't look just at the division. You're going to look at the overall program, the winning record. And uh, But to answer your question briefly, I would say low D1, D2, D3, NA, NAIA. The other question was something about um, in eighth grade. Somebody had some a player in eighth grade. Um, Here's what we say. That's a little. That's 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 too early to really start thinking about this. But the kind of general rule of thumb is it's really never too early to start. Coach is never going to be like, you know what, this girl is just way too proactive. She's just way too on top of her game. You know, I'm absolutely taking her off my list. That never happens. Um, the only thing that you can suffer from is starting the process a little bit too late, and you run into, hey, you know, we already have our 2011 class you know, solidify things, thanks anyways, you know, so you just want to make sure you're being proactive, you're getting your information out early, um, and that's kind of why we're here to help, so. Well, Amanda, Chris, I think it's been a great evening. <clears throat> I appreciate 
I learned some stuff. Um, I know that everybody listening did, and we'll um, make sure that uh, everybody knows. You know, you will be getting a chance to review this webinar and the PowerPoint on the hidden links that on the website at a later time, and you'll get that link emailed to you. Um, for everybody on tonight, I think a special note, and I'm getting a lot of thanks, thanks, what a great thing, thank you, thank you, and, and thanks so much, very insightful, and so I think you guys did a great job. Wonderful. Well, we appreciate awesome. it, you guys. So I will email the info, the recruiting packet info tomorrow to everybody that attended tonight, and uh, you'll get the emails of uh, both Amanda and Chris in that packet, so follow up with them. I'm going to hit the stop recording button here, I think, and uh, I don't know, you probably still are in charge of everything, Amanda, so okay. <laughs> feel yeah, the power. Sure. Yeah, definitely. All right. So, All right. well, thank you so much, John. I appreciate it. That was seamless, I think. For the most part, good job. Yeah, I think we did good. All right. All righty. Well, Thank you. Okay. Good night. Uh, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll talk soon. All right. Bye.